Autism has become a bit of a buzzword, and that's a good thing in terms of bringing normalcy to it and researching the causes. But there's a reason it's called Autism Spectrum Disorder. There is literally a spectrum of behaviors that go along with it. Every person on the autism spectrum is different, but one main characteristic is most displayed is the difficulty in understanding social norms or communicating properly. There's a whole history about how autism has been defined and how things are categorized, but let's just skip ahead to this fact. Those who are deemed, for lack of a better term, high-functioning autistic have a higher rate of suicide. They know enough about social norms to know that they don't actually know enough about social norms, if that makes sense. But cheer up, folks. What better way to promote the awesomeness of something than to make a list of awesome people who have done so in spite of their personal challenges? Never let a label hold you back. So sit back, learn a little something, and share this video to spread the good word. Stay tuned to number one to see just how many names you recognize. Number 10. Daryl Hannah The younger generations might not be as familiar with Ms. Hannah, but anyone over 30 has probably seen Splash, where Tom Hanks falls in love with a mermaid, played by Hannah, who tests out life on land. If you look up her career, you'll see her resume is filled to the brim, but they haven't all been big roles. A childhood diagnosis led specialists to want to institutionalize her, but her mother was having none of that. Ms. Hannah has spoken out in recent years about how having autism has affected her discomfort with and eventual avoidance of interviews and typical Hollywood smooge fests. This in turn has made the bigwigs tired of working with her, but she's fought her way back. Ironically enough, she never wanted those close to her to reveal her diagnosis during what could have been her big shot at superstardom. Now that she's opening up about it, Hollywood is slowly opening its doors again, with a role on Sense8 and three upcoming projects due out in 2018. Get ready for her to make another Hollywood splash. <laughs> Get it? Number 9. Dan Aykroyd Sometimes your obsessions or quirks can end up being the best thing that ever happened to you. Aykroyd's love, and by love we mean complete and utter obsession with ghosts, is what led him to writing Ghostbusters. And can you imagine a world without Ghostbusters? I shudder to think. Though he has been officially diagnosed on the autism spectrum, it wasn't until later in his life when his wife talked him into seeing a therapist. If you've managed to live under a rock all these years and you don't know who Dan Aykroyd is, let us remind you that he got his start on this little improv show you might have heard of, Saturday Night Live. IMDB to the rescue. Number 8. Vincent Philip Donofrio Though most viewers don't know him by name, Donofrio is best known as the lead detective on the TV series Law & Order Criminal Intent. Vincent Donofrio has played many characters over the years. He has a face you instantly recognize, even if you can't remember how to say his last name. From a loose cannon marine recruit to a crazy evil alien, he seems to have a knack for delving into a role in a way others might not. The autism question has been circling around him for some time, which grew into a giant question mark at the news that he had written a script about a person with autism. But he cleared things up. Sort of. Well, kind of. Uh, okay, not really. In an interview he did regarding the script called Johnny and Me, he feels his mind doesn't work the same way other minds might, and that if he had been evaluated as a child, he probably would have been labeled as special needs and most likely been placed on the autism spectrum, and that his autistic character in Johnny and Me is actually based on his personal experiences as well as someone else in his family. So even though he doesn't officially give a yes or no answer to his spectrum tendencies, it does reiterate how feeling different when you are younger could turn you into a seriously awesome adult. Number 7. Matthew Laberteau A childhood involving a hole in his heart, super late milestones for walking and talking, crazy tantrums, and an autism diagnosis ended with experts telling Matthew Laberteau's parents to institutionalize him. Hmm, are we seeing a pattern about the mindset of doctors a few decades ago? Luckily, his parents put a kibosh on that plan, leading Laberteau to eventually follow his older brother into acting. His name may not be as well known, but wait until you've heard all that he's accomplished. He started off with a role in a classic we know you've all heard of, Little House on the Prairie. 
he continued with various TV work through the 80s, then started doing more voice work. Laverto's voice can be heard in video games, the Disney movie Mulan, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. And interestingly enough, we'll get back to Pokemon later. Number 6. Temple Grandin Sometimes you aren't the actor in the movie, but you're still the star. Seems how a movie was made about this lady, she's probably worth mentioning. If you've managed to get to this point in your life without hearing the name Temple Grandin, then it may surprise you that she's famous for basically being an animal livestock scientist. We're sure there's a more technical term for her work, but most of us probably wouldn't understand. Joking aside, she's more than a livestock guru. She's also a professor, author, autism advocate, and inventor, though her inventions revolve around, you guessed it, livestock. Though her name was recognized in the farming industry, it wasn't until she started publishing that others took notice. You see, Ms. Grandin's book was one of the first that helped explain the brain of a person with autism. She didn't presume to know what others dealt with, and she didn't conduct studies, but she was able to paint a picture of her mind, and it was fascinating. Simply being able to go from a kid whose only friends were the horses to someone who's able to articulate so many mysteries of autism was a major win for the world. Number 5. Robert Gagno This up-and-coming name fits into a few different categories, as he's beginning to dip his toe into acting. Robert Gagno is also involved in documentaries and art development on the movies. Oh, and did we mention he's a pinball wizard? Yep, just like in the song by The Who. An honest-to-goodness, legit pinball wizard. Seriously, Google him! Despite a childhood of awkwardness, doctors claiming he'd never talk, and hours on end of him just spinning, Mr. Gagno is joining the ranks of those proving that a label is nothing but a label. Nothing more, nothing less. He travels alone. He still competes in pinball championships. Yes, that's a thing. He does interviews, and he's starting to let his artistic side out. Go, Robert, go! Number 4. Tim Burton no movie would be complete without a director. Tim Burton's story is an interesting one. It's similar to Dan Aykroyd's in that a later-in-life diagnosis helped make sense of his childhood, his quirks, and general personality traits. Though we should mention he hasn't been officially diagnosed, well, not by a professional anyway, his longtime former partner, actress Helena Bonham Carter, diagnosed him. And most people agreed. But we'd love to hear about a formal diagnosis. Anyway, he was a recluse as a child, preferring to involve himself in art or homemade stop-motion videos. It wasn't until him and Helena were watching a documentary on autism for a future project that they were both working on that they had the realization. She felt as if it was describing all of his wonderful quirks and eccentricities, and he felt like someone else could finally understand how he felt as a child. He even stated that he feels his film Edward Scissorhands is somewhat autobiographical. Regardless, his brilliant mind has made some brilliant films. Aside from Scissored Hands, he's also directed Beetlejuice, Batman, Batman Returns, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Sleepy Hollow, Planet of the Apes, Big Fish, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Sweeney Todd, and more. Number 3. Heather Kuzmich Let's take a break for a moment from movie-related names. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of America's Next Top Model. Heather Kuzmich was the first person with autism to be a contestant on the show. She might not have won, but she went very far. But more importantly, her presence alone on the show helped to show what many of us already knew, that having the label of Autism Spectrum Disorder does not mean that you can't follow your dreams. Meanwhile, Ms. Kuzmich continues to be an awesome supermodel while also working to get a degree in video game design. Number 2. Alexis Weinman Sticking with fashion for a moment, the idea of autism is probably not synonymous with beauty pageants. Let's be honest, but that doesn't mean it can't be. Or at least that you can't participate just because of a label you were given. Alexis Weinman actually won the Miss Montana title. Her teenage diagnosis gave a name to the awkwardness she'd already felt for years. Communication wasn't easy. Loud sounds bothered her. She preferred to sit quietly in a hoodie rather than prance around in heels and a dress. So why did she even enter the competition? Well, to prove people wrong. With an awesomely supportive family, Ms. Wyman decided to challenge herself to shut up her critics and help change the face of autism. And if that sparkly Miss Montana crown means anything, 
Hey, I think she succeeded. Number 1. Satoshi Tajiri We saved the best for last. Satoshi Tajiri, probably better known as that guy that created Pokemon, is seriously successful and definitely ranks high on our list of awesome people. And to think, it all started with a hobby for collecting bugs. One trait that some people on the autism spectrum have is an obsession for one particular topic. It might be something that they simply love to watch, love to learn about, become an expert in, or simply can't be without. For Satoshi, it was collecting bugs. From that came his desire to give kids something new to collect. And in case you didn't know, collecting Pokemon is kind of a big deal. Add in his high school obsession with video games and the perfect combination was born. It took time and the help of an illustrator, but basically he created an empire. And yet again, a successful adulthood doesn't mean a perfect childhood. Mr. Tajiri was often lost in his own thoughts, making it hard for him to make friends. Well, at least of the human variety. Leading teachers to call him lazy and eventually flunking him out of school. Hard work changed that, but the point remains. Every child, regardless of if they are on the autism spectrum or have a label or diagnosis or not, will have times that they feel different. It's a given. Growing up is like that. But turn lemons into lemonade, or, you know, turn a bug collection into a multi-million dollar enterprise. Your quirks can also be your strengths. Who do you know that has succeeded regardless of the challenges in their life? We'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more Zero to Hero content. Take care.